What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. Yo, it's your boy L. Hit him, Mr. All Yeah. Y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. We got behind the scenes, man. We're gonna tie this bitch up. What up, this your boy Bum J. We rocking with Street Certified News. It's that great. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Mixo Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. Man, this week's story, man, we gonna get into uh, some old dudes from Chicago. Um, at a time, they were the biggest drug dealers in Chicago. And some people would even say that they were the biggest drug dealers in America. Eventually working their way up to, you know, right-hand man status uh, for the dude Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Before eventually, man, you know, they, of course, turned it for me, man. Entered the Witness Protection Program and helped bring down, you know, a number of people, including uh, the dude El Chapo. Man, hey, this week's story, man, we're going to get right into it, man. The Flores twins, the dude Margarito and Pedro Flores, man. Let's get right into it. Margarito Flores and his twin brother Pedro Flores once were the biggest drug traffickers in Chicago. However, when they were taken down by the federal government, the twins decided to cooperate against all of their drug connections, including Sinaloa drug leader Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. This is the story of the twins from Love Village, who became the biggest drug dealers in America before turning federal informants and cooperating with the government against all of their former drug connections. This is the story of the Flores twins, Pedro and Margarito Flores. Pedro and Margarito Flores were born in 1981 to Mexican immigrant parents. Known as Pete and Jr., the Flores twins were exposed to the dangerous undercurrent of Chicago's little village from a young age. In 1992, when the twins were only 10 years old, Chicago police executed a search warrant on the Flores home and found $195,000 worth of marijuana. Two years later, gang intelligence officers raided the home again, this time recovering a 380 caliber handgun in a bedroom. At the time, cops were looking for the Flores twins' older brother, Armando Flores. Neighbors would eventually tell the newspapers during this time, the twins seemed to play the background and steer clear of trouble. According to federal documents, Armando had been selling drugs out of a Cicero car dealership and in August 1998 was arrested by federal authorities and charged with narcotics trafficking. He was sentenced to the next five years in prison, creating a vacuum for his younger brothers to fill. In 1999, Pedro was introduced to Armando's supplier and a number of his customers, and for the next few years, the twins' drug business would expand routinely selling multi-kilo loads of cocaine to dealers in Chicago and Milwaukee. By the time the Flores twins were 22, the brothers were effectively rich from their drug business. Pedro and Junior owned five houses, as well as a fleet of luxury vehicles and motorcycles. Court documents show Margarito once boasted on spending $20,000 for landscaping on his home. The twins were also regulars at several Rush Street clubs, arriving in luxury vehicles and picking up the bill for friends. Acquaintances would later say that while the twins had a reputation for avoiding trouble, everyone knew what they were into. It was hard to miss. Wearing the latest Air Jordan sneakers, driving Jaguars and Escalades, and always carrying cash, the twins clearly had a lot of money without normal employment but their well-established street rep also came at a cost. In the summer of 2003, the twins were targeted for a kidnapping by a notorious Chicago drug dealer who had been introduced to the brothers at a gym on the near west side. The dealer's associates posing as cops snatched Pedro out of his blue Lexus, covered his eyes, and took him to a Burbank basement. Margarito later negotiated about a $2 million ransom of cocaine and cash and Pedro was eventually released unharmed. Even though the twins had a good idea of who was involved, they simply absorbed the loss rather than strike back. The veneer of the brothers being law-abiding citizens was still in place when Margarito was stopped at a seatbelt checkpoint in 2003. He told the arresting officers he was a barber at a salon on South Pulaski Road. 
The business Millennium Cuts, federal agents later alleged, was one of the handful of legitimate businesses the twins set up as a front. The brothers worked closely together, but also took on distinct roles to build their business. Margarito was responsible for making sure that the drugs got into the U.S. from their suppliers in Mexico. Pedro ran operations on the ground in Chicago, where he would coordinate the movements of about 15 couriers to ensure that they made connections with all of their wholesale customers. To evade wiretaps, the twins constantly switched phones used to communicate with customers, sometimes twice a month. Their crews drove vehicles with hidden compartments all over Chicago to exchange drugs and money. One trapdoor could be tripped only by pushing a foot pedal on the floor and simultaneously activating the windows and defroster. Between 2005 and 2008, the Flores brothers and their crew operated Chicago-based wholesale distribution sale for the Sinaloa cartel and a rival drug trafficking organization controlled by Arturo Beltran Levia, receiving on average 1,500 to 2,000 kilograms of cocaine per month. Approximately half of this cocaine was distributed to the Flores' customers in the Chicago area, while the other half was distributed to customers in Columbus, Cincinnati, Detroit, Milwaukee, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and Vancouver. In spite of the twins' caution, authorities in Milwaukee have begun working their way up the chain by spring of 2003, first picking off dealers who were buying from them in Wisconsin. Authorities started hearing about suppliers named Peter and Junior from Chicago. Soon investigators zeroed in on the twins, executing search warrants on several Flores properties. These raids led to a drug trafficking indictment against the Flores twins in 2005. But by then, they knew what was coming and then fled to Mexico. It would be over three years before the charges would catch up with the twins. Now to the inside story of two Chicago brothers who turned on El Chapo, helping make today's conviction possible. They did it on the watch of Jack Riley, who once headed the Drug Enforcement Administration right here in Chicago, and who once had a bounty on his head placed there by the drug lord himself. It was on Riley's watch that federal agents arrested and flipped twin brothers from Chicago's little village neighborhood. Pedro and Margarito Flores were El Chapo's biggest distributors here in the Midwest. They used stash houses in the suburbs and modified vehicles to keep the pipeline of drugs flowing from Mexico to Chicago. In 2008, their luck ran out. That's when they were ensnared by federal authorities and agreed to become informants for the Drug Enforcement Administration against Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who was second in command at the Sinaloa cartel. The Flores brothers began cooperating with the government in around October 2008 and recorded conversations, including two with Chapo Guzman. Their cooperation resulted in the indictments against leaders of the Sinaloa cartel and the Beltran Levia organization as well as the complete dismantling of the brothers' own Chicago-based criminal enterprise. In late 2008 alone, their cooperation facilitated approximately a dozen seizures in the Chicago area, totaling hundreds of kilograms of cocaine and heroin, and more than $15 million in cash, as well as the seizure of more than 1,600 kilograms of cocaine in the Los Angeles area that was bound for Chicago. Identical twins, J and P Flores, who were once North America's biggest drug traffickers, turned themselves in to the United States government with the hopes of starting a new life. Over the years, the Flores twins brought in 60 tons or more and sent more than $1.8 billion back to Mexico to pay for those drugs, putting them among El Chapo's biggest customers. In 2009, the brother's father was kidnapped and presumed killed when he re-entered Mexico despite the U.S. government warning him not to do so. Overall, the Chicago-based investigation of the Sinaloa cartel had resulted in the seizures of approximately $30.8 million, approximately 11 tons of cocaine, 265 kilograms of methamphetamine, and 78 kilograms of heroin. The brothers would finally plead guilty to one count of drug conspiracy behind closed doors at a 2012 hearing. Absent cooperation, prosecutors have said that the twins would have faced an almost certain life in prison sentence. In the end, 
The Flores twins were only sentenced to 14 years in federal prison. Since becoming informants and aiding the federal government in a number of major drug takedowns, both of the men are now out of prison. And in July 2023, it was reported that Margarito Flores is now teaching law enforcement authorities how to fight the cartels and catch drug traffickers. Both brothers are now a part of the Federal Witness Protection Program and working with people in Hollywood to popularize their story. Sadly, no one seems to fault them for their cooperation. With admiration both from Hollywood as well as their wives becoming famous, it would seem that the Flores twin snitching has gone unnoticed. Yo, it's your boy MX El Guapo, man. Street certified news, man. The most reputable source for urban news, man. Make sure y'all hit that like, comment, subscribe, man. Keep rocking with your boy. Hey, we appreciate everybody for rocking with us, man. Drop a comment. Hey, let us know what you think about this doc, man. You know what I'm saying? On the Flores Twins. Hey, it's your boy Richard Gobble, man. Street certified news. We out.